Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So this is discussion for our tutorial Okay, question number one Define the following terms Alright So the first term is karyogami Okay, karyogami is the fusion of nuclei Okay, fusion of nuclei Alright Plasmogamy. Okay, plasmogamy is the fusion of the cytoplasm. Okay, fusion of cytoplasm from different mating hyphae. So, ingat balik yang bahagian hyphae tu. Okay, so fusion of cytoplasm between different mating hyphae. Sinocytic. Okay, sinocytic is um, part of the hyphae. Okay, it's a hyphae that are not divided. Into individual compartment, okay. So this is a hyphae that is not divided into compartment, okay. And then the last one is dichaotic. Dichaotic is the condition of hyphae, uh, which consists of different nuclei. So hyphae tu dia ada. Lebih daripada satu nuklei. Ha, tu masa dia kita panggil dikaryotik. Okay. Hyphae which consists okay, of different nuklei. Alright. We go into question 1B. Okay. Define lichen and explain the diversity of growth form in lichen. Okay, so tengok dulu markah. Dia enam markah. Jadi, enam markah dekat sini awak kena bagi tahu uh, yang pertama point dia apa. So, ada tiga point and then dia mesti ada explanation. Okay, kemudian yang pertama soalan dia define. Awak kena bagi tahu what is lichen. Okay, lichen tu apa? And then baru awak explain the growth form, bentuk-bentuk yang ada dalam lichen. So, what is lichen? So, lichen is a symbiotic association between two organism. Okay. Ha, so, dia mesti melibatkan mutualistic ataupun symbiotic uh, Relationship between two organism. Apakah organism itu awak kena mention. Yang pertama ialah phototroph. Dia boleh buat makanan sendiri. Sama ada green algae ataupun cyanobacterium with the fungus. So, dia mesti alahi. Asimbiotic relationship between phototroph, green algae ataupun cyanobacterium yang ada chlorophyll yang boleh buat makanan sendiri dengan fungus. So, there are two, sorry, there are three types of lichen. Yang pertama ialah crustus. Okay, yang kedua ialah folios. Dan yang ketiga ialah fruticus. Okay, crustus uh, ni yang mana? Yang flat. So, I kena mention. So, what is crustus? Grow flat and tightly against their substrate. Ha, tu jawapan dia eh. Okay, yang kedua folios. Folios ni flat but have leaf-like structure. Okay. Leaf-like structure that are not tightly pressed on the substrate. So, I'm going to mention. Okay. And the fruticose is grow erect or freestanding branching tube. Okay. Some other they grow erect. Erect is upward. Okay. Ke atas. Ataupun freestanding. Okay. So, this is how you answer the question so so actually this question is uh from previous uh past uh previous test eh so aku boleh tengoklah macam mana bentuk soalan yang ditanya okay question a describe the difference between bryophytes and pteridophytes so remember okay recall balik bryophyte is mosses liver wood yang kita belajar okay non vascular pteridophyte ialah fern and fern allies dia dah masuk pokok paku pakis So, dia uh, soalan ni, dia tanya two differences. Jadi, awak kena bagi satu from bryophytes and then satu from pteridophytes. 
4 mark So cukup lah ada 2 point Okay Okay yang pertama the sporophyte generation oh, Boleh sentuh pada sporophyte Generation Of moses Okay so the sporophyte generation The generation of moses dependent On gametophyte generation While the sporophyte generation of fern Okay Ah. Okay, ah. okay sporophyte generation of moses is dependent on gametophyte generations while the sporophyte generation of ferns is independent on gametophyte generation so kita dah tahu kat situ sporophyte generation dia bergantung kepada gametophyte ataupun tidak tu satu perbezaan eh yang kedua ialah the moses are non vascular non vascular maksudnya dia lack structure of xylem and phloem meanwhile pterophyte ah vascular plant satu in terms of vascular okey satu non vascular satu vascular okey so uh, saya bagi extra point the moses have separated male and female gametophyte okey kalau bryophytes ni dia punya gametophyte dia separate on different plant okey uh, male lain female lain but for pterophyte male and female are in the same part Okay Itu lagi satu Factor lah Ataupun point Okay Gametophyte In terms of Gametophyte Point So kat sini Awak boleh Jawab sebelum tu Okay We go into Question 3B Draw and label The tailors of Makantia To show their male gametophyte The female gametophyte And their asexual parts Okay so, makantia ni dia dah masuk under bryophyte. So, male gametophyte separate from the female gametophyte. And they also do the asexual reproduction. Kat sini kita nak lukis yang mana. So, awak lukis yang ada. Okay, gain of four. And anteriodophor. Okay. Macam ni nak lukis. Okay, lukis yang daun bentuk loop tu. Okay, yang pertama ialah Archegonia. Dia macam bentuk uh, Kelopak dia tu macam uh, Besar sedikit kan. Berbanding dengan Anteridio 4. Okay. And then label kan. Okay. Label kan yang mana Archegonia 4 and Anteridio 4. Okay, yang mana male gametophyte and female gametophyte. And the asexual part is the Game cup. So, awak kena lukis yang ada Game cup. Ha, so, awak kena labelkan sebagai Game cup. Tanya grandma Tanya grandma Okay Alright Okay, list of profile lah can see under gymnosperm Okay, so gymnosperm ni Dia punya Keyword dia ialah Naked seed Okay, dia punya seed dekat luar Contoh yang paling famous ialah Pokok pine, okay, under coniferophyta. So, dia ada four phyla. Coniferophyta yang paling besar sekali dan paling banyak and then we have cycadophyta, cycad and we also have ginkgo phyta, yang ginkgo biloba and the last one is genetophyta. Okay, so only four phyla. So, two marks. Each of answer kalau betul dapat half mark. Okay, kalau salah, tolak half mark. We go into question 2D. Describe the three differences between dicot and monocot. Okay, so ingat balik. Ni dah masuk flowering plant eh. Dicot and monocot. So, dicot means dicotyledon. Monocot means monocotyledon. Three differences. Okay. Awak boleh pilih ada banyak sangat differences dia. Yang pertama, saya bagi contoh. In terms of flower parts. Yang kedua, pollen grain. Okay. Yang ketiga, leaf venation lah. Okay. Bentuk urat daun dia. So, we go into dicot first and then monocot. Okay. So, for dicot, flower parts usually four or five. Okay. Four or Five, okay, flower parts. Dia, dia refer kepada petals, yeah. 
and then the pollen grain the pollen grain uh, normally have three furrow of pores dia ada macam liang ataupun ada macam lurah eh uh, dia ada three furrow and then the leaf venation normally net okay okay kalau monocot pula the flower part usually in three biasanya dia di kelopak dia ada tiga and the pollen grain normally single furrow or four dia sama ada ada tiga uh, apa ni furrow ataupun four and the leaf venation normally parallel so there are many other um, differences okay for example the vascular bundle in stem for dicot they arrange in a circle meanwhile monocot usually scattered and for the root dicot have tap root system meanwhile monocot have fibrous root system and for the seed okay ha ni karakter yang paling mudah nak ingat kalau seed untuk dicot they have embryo with two cotyledons meanwhile monocot they have seed uh, embryo with one cotyledon and for the secondary growth for dicot they have present they have secondary growth and monocot they are absent okay secondary growth ni maksudnya dia punya batang tu pokok dia dia boleh membesar melebar okey ah sebab tu macam kayu balak kan lagi tua kayu tu lebih besar sebab dia boleh bertumbuh secara melebar dia bukan meninggi saja dia melebar okey so xylem and phloem dia ada yang secondary xylem uh, secondary phloem tu maksud dia secondary growth okey okey we move into next question two functions of fruit okay so this is angiosperm okay soalan pada angiosperm juga so apa fungsi fruit okay yang pertama fruit to protect the seed okay yang pertama dia mesti untuk protect the seed sebab seed dalam fruit kan protect the developing developing seed daripada apa from desiccation Okay, desiccation as they grow and mature. And then fruit also help, okay, ataupun aid in the dispersal, dispersal of seed. Sebab bila human ataupun animal makan buah, uh, and then they akan throw away the seed. So that is how the uh, seed will be dispersed, okay. So the last question is to have explain briefly the meaning of double fertilization. This is also a very familiar question, quite famous question. Okay, apa yang berlaku? So double fertilization is a fusion process. Okay, fusion process of two sperm cell with egg cell and polar nuclei respectively. Sebab fertilization tu berlaku dua kali. Yang pertama, sperm akan fertilize the egg cell. The other one, the sperm akan fuse dengan polar nuclei. Okay. So that's all for our tutorial. Okay. Cuba buat eh. Uh, check semula apa yang awak dah buat. Okay. Uh, secara tak langsung. Bila awak buat latihan ni. Awak tahu di mana point-point yang penting. Yang awak perlu highlight dalam note. Saya faham dalam notes tu terlalu banyak. Facts yang awak perlu ingat. Uh, so the, bila kita buat soalan macam ni. Awak akan lebih. Uh, organize okay? Awak nak susun no, awak Macam mana Awak nak fahamkan Soalan jenis yang macam mana Selalu ditanya So bila kita buat tutorial Macam ni Especially Bila kita buat past equation uh, Kita akan lebih uh, Terlatih lah okay? Macam mana untuk Exam nanti Dan awak nak Organize Awak punya notes Dan juga Understanding towards uh, Certain sub subject Ataupun certain topics tu Lebih mudah Okay that's all for today Thank you